Hello and welcome back to day three of my inventor.io 30 days lost in space adventure. If you remember in yesterday's video, I wired up an external LED. We uh, played around with a little bit of the Arduino logic to blink the internal and external LEDs back and forth. We had one LED light up solid while the other one blinked, and then we flip-flopped them. And while I was off camera, I figured I would play a little bit, and I wired in a second LED, this green one. And then I wrote the logic to have them kind of blink in a circle, if you will. So that's really what they want you to do. They want you to experiment with programming the language by yourself and kind of play around with the examples that they give you and try to build on what they're showing you. And I was taking that to my advantage. I turned the camera off and I said, all right, you know what, let's, uh, let's put another light in here and play around and see what we can get. Um, I have noticed that I've been having some lighting issues and this camera isn't really the greatest thing in the world. So I do apologize, it's kind of potato quality, especially for 2021. <laughs> modern times I'm using a 10 year old camera that doesn't really project the best it's great for what I was using it for but it's not good for this type of stuff so I might have to look into an upgrade in the future if I continue to do videos like this so what we're gonna do in this video from the looks of the diagram is we're going to build on what we learned yesterday with the single LED and we're going to incorporate this little switch into our circuit and we're going to use the switch to turn the light on and off by wiring in the switch onto the breadboard and then writing the logic on the hero board to sense when we are providing voltage to an input and in this case we'll use one of these lower guys here as the input once it senses the input, it would then send the electrical signal through the output to turn the light on. So let me go watch that video, and I will uh, I'll see you on the computer. Okay, so I watched the video, and I looked at the schematic. I followed the schematic the way that they have it depicted in the picture here. And what they're doing is they have... A continuous 5 volt coming out from this side of the board coming into the breadboard in line with this dip switch in position number one that positive voltage then comes out to this green wire here which goes to input number two and then there's a resistor here what this resistor is doing is it's pulling the signal to ground as the green wire is getting the signal for the input. Once the switch is on, the input gets triggered. It then triggers this output to turn the LED on. The LED is also tied to ground. So you'll see that there is a ground lead going to the common terminal and then this ground and this resistor ground are both tied into the central ground on the board. In the code what they do is they define two integers one value for the input and one value for the output. So if I didn't mention it, an integer is a solid number value, plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two. There's no decimal points in integers. Um, and integer values have a maximum of plus 32,000-ish to minus 32,000-ish. It's a little bit more, but we'll say 32,000. So in this case, I'm gonna define two integers. I will define the first integer as switch 1. I will say that switch 1 is on pin number 
two. And in the video, to clarify one thing, Alex, the narrator, mentions that you can put the input on any pin. He put it on two, I'm putting it on two, but you can't put it on zero or one. So to clarify what the video says, you cannot put it on any pin. You have to start with number two. You cannot put this input signal on zero or one. It will not work. The way that they have it depicted in the video is they have two integer lines. I'm gonna call mine red LED. And my input is number eight. So you can have your integer values on two lines or you can define them both on a common line and separate them with a comma. As long as you terminate that line with the semicolon, this will work just as well as having it on two separate lines. In the setup section, we have to do a pin mode. And we'll say switch one, comma, input. And we'll do another pin mode, red LED. Assign that as an output. And then in our loop section, what we're going to do is a, a conditional statement known as an if statement. So an if statement just checks a condition and says if this statement is true, do what is inside this area of code. So what we'll do is we'll do an if, open parenthesis, we're going to do a digital read on the input And inside of the parentheses next to digital read, we'll put switch one. And then we'll say if it's equal to one, which is a high signal or a true signal, we can, uh, we can try uh, high and we can try true and see if it works as well as the one. But in the example, they show equals to one open and close curly bracket. And if the condition has been met, we will do a digital write to red LED, and we'll set that to high. There's also another conditional that goes along with an if statement. There's actually two, there's else if, which means you can have multiple conditions within this single if statement. You could say, if this is true, then set this to high. Otherwise, if this condition is true, set this to high or something like that. If we had the two LEDs like I had on the board before, if we had the red and the green, I could say, if digital read switch one is equal to one, turn on the red LED Otherwise, if switch two is equal to one, then we can have another conditional to say digital write green LED and turn that to high. In this case here, we're just going to do an else, open close curly bracket. And inside of the else conditional, we'll just say digital write red LED low. I'll verify and upload my file. It took the program no problem, so there were no errors in my code. When I turn the switch on, the LED does turn on. I actually tested this out before with the code that they supplied on the page. 
So if we compare apples and apples, we'll see that they have switch one and LED. I have them both on the same line. Inside of here, switch one and LED, they set their output, their input, and then they have the if conditional, digital read, and inside the parenthesis here, switch one, because what this is doing is this is reading the signal on switch one, and it's saying if this is true, which is one, then turn the light on, otherwise keep the light off. In my case, I want to see if true works, so I'll change that, I'll upload. So far it looks like it's going to work, I'll turn my light on, and my light goes on. So true or one, let's see if it takes it as a high. It uploaded the code. The switch still works the way it's intended. So that means that one, true, and high all work within this if conditional. So let's do the same thing here. I wanna test this out. I'll say, okay, set it to one or set it to zero, and let's see if we get an error message. So far, so good. The board still works. So it would appear that you can utilize true, false, zero, one, or high, low, depending on what your preference is. So let me go back to the overhead camera and I will show you what I have going on. So as you can see here, I have my breadboard set up. I have all of my lines going to my hero board. I've got my five volt constant coming out and going to the breadboard on dip switch position number one. On the other side of this little channel here, which separates this side from this side, I have the signal wire going to input number two because like I said, input zero and one will not work for this. I have the resistor going to ground. I have ground common to this terminal rail here, which is the blue side, the negative side of this outermost section here. On position number eight, pin number eight, I have this orange lead coming out and going to the positive side of my LED. I'm lowering the voltage with this 220 ohm resistor. This is also a 220 ohm resistor, just so you know. Turns the light on. And we have our jumper to ground. And I just did this to show you that no matter where it is on this rail, this is sharing a common ground point. So this jumper could be anywhere on this side of the board. And then when I turn the light on, you'll see it turns the light on. If I go back to my code, I still have the true and the false for the red LED instead of the high and the low but I'll set them to high and low. I'll re-upload the program and we'll see that it still works. Now in a real world scenario, you wouldn't really write Arduino logic to flip a switch on or off. You would basically just wire the switch to power, come out from here to here, jump over, light up the LED and call it a day. But I can see what they're doing. They're, they're having you write the logic 
So you can do the if conditional, you learn about the else conditional that goes with the if conditional. So it's a useful it's a useful exercise, albeit a little far fetched, if you will, in a real world scenario. But then I can with the logic what I can do is I can blink that LED and what I'll do is in my if loop I'll say delay 200 digital right red LED low delay 200 and that should loop around and blink so let's see what that does it uploaded so that means that it took the code it compiled properly I'll turn the light on and we'll see that now we have a blinking light and you wouldn't be able to do this without having this board connected to tell the output to flash every 200 milliseconds. So that's uh, that's all for today. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Not sure where we're going at this point. I think what they're going to have us do is utilize more of the dip switch. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you are enjoying what you see here, I would get on the get on the list and get yourself a 30 day lost in space kit or hop on Amazon and get one of the kits that they have there there's some really good kits on Amazon as well again I have no affiliation with these guys they were just kind enough to send me this board so they would be my first point of contact to reach out to for additional Arduino type hardware so look them up first if you're interested the kit is great. They give you a, a lot of information on their website, a bunch of different tutorials. I already noticed that I'm enrolled in uh, another course that I didn't even sign up for. They just took it upon themselves to tell me that I should uh, take care of that one once I'm done with this one. So I'm going to uh, I'll finish the 30 days of this and I'll see what the next course entails. I may have to get some more sensors, switches, who knows. So anyway, if, you, uh, if you're enjoying the content, please like and subscribe. And if you feel generous, drop me a cup of coffee on my Patreon. The uh, links are all down in the description, and we will see you tomorrow.